Hello everyone, it's Chris and Kelsey with SpraySmarter.com. Today, Chris is going to be showing us a quick tip uh, video on, we're only gonna be talking about T-Jet uh, nozzles today, but he's going to be showing us a, our calculation on how to select your uh, nozzles, T-Jet nozzles. Correct, yes, so this is my first go-to on sizing a nozzle. So, nozzles have orifice sizes and we need to come up with what orifice we need for your typical whatever your application is that you're you're wanting so um, typically we get a customer that would call and say I am spraying this 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 so what you need to have to get the gallons per minute to get the orifice size at 40 psi is this equation so for an example um, the customer would be doing 10 miles an hour and then their nozzle spacing, just for an example as well, 20 inch spacing, that's pretty common. And then we wanna know gallons per acre, and we're just gonna go ahead and go with 10 gallons per acre. So we got 10 miles an hour, 20 inch nozzle spacings between each nozzle. So this is what we wanna know, is what your space is between each nozzle is. So we're saying 20 inches. So between each nozzle we have 20 inches, and we're spraying 10 gallons to the acre. And then we're going to divide that by the constant number of 5940. So I'll just do that real quick because that's pretty hard for me to do in my head. So we have 10 times 20 times 10 divided by 5940. And I come up with a 0.33. So that's going to be 0.33 gallons per minute at 40 PSI. That's how all nozzles are, are, that's how everybody comes up with all the nozzles. So then they, from there, they're color coded. So um, I come up with this number, I'm saying, okay, you need a 0.33 gallon per minute at 40 PSI nozzle. This is just an example too. So we're just gonna say you're wanting an XR 11003-BS. So I'll explain what that means. In T-Jet's terms, XR is extended range, 110 degree, 0.3 gallon per minute at 40 PSI. So that's how all nozzles are rated. So that 0.33 is real close to what we need here. We might be a little bit over on the pressure. It might be 42 PSI that gets the, so you might have a little higher pressure. So it's gonna come up to extended range, 110 degree. Let me write that correctly. and that is gallons per minute at 40 PSI. So that's what the numbers mean in, in the T-Jet sprayer, spray tips. So once we find that, that's the easy part. Then we need to find what type of nozzle you're gonna need. So depending on the application, the chemical, um, droplet size, things like that, we'll have to take the next step in finding now that we found you need an 03 nozzle, an XR11003, for example, or just a 11003, we need to find out what nozzle you need. Okay, so now that we've figured out what size nozzle you need, we're going to go into the next step is finding what type of nozzle you need, and that's based on the different spray patterns um, we've chosen today. They're all blue, T-Jet, different types of the, the blue 03 nozzle sizes and Chris is gonna go into a little bit more detail on the different literature that TJet has to offer. It's super helpful. Um, I'll let him explain more. So these days, a lot of the, the nozzle selection is based off of droplet size, um, type of chemical. TJet does a really good job in their catalog laying out the types of chemicals and the nozzles that are good, excellent, very good for that application. So. Let's just use herbicides as the first example, which is a pretty common um, spray practice. So there are several different types. There's soil applied and post-emergence. So then when you get into post-emergence herbicide, we talk about a contact or a systemic chemical. So a contact chemical would be a 2,4-D or something that you want to spray a nice even pattern across the leaf to get coverage on the foliage where a systemic chemical 
doesn't really care so much about what the droplet size is. Actually, you want lower drift and then the plant actually absorbs the chemical inside. So that's the difference between the systemic and, and the contact. So some people like to use the same for both. There are ones that are very good. As you can see right here, if you wanted to do a contact and a systemic, I could look down there and say the A3070 is a pretty good one for that. Or we could even go down in here and, and see a very good and an excellent in the uh, DJ Twin Jet. So this is basically getting you to where, what kind of nozzle we wanna use. So based off of that information, then we can suggest, okay, we think you need an XR, a TT, a twin, an air inducted. So these are all air inducted nozzles. So what does air induction mean? So that's a good question. Air induction nozzles have a metering orifice and an exiting orifice. So as you can see here, this is an XR or AIXR 11003, and this is a removable orifice. This is metering it. So that's what telling me that it's a 0 0.3 gallon per minute nozzle. Now, when it exits this orifice, it's a little bigger, so it creates a bigger droplet. And when it does that, it pulls in a little air to create a bubble. So that's the air induction. It's, uh, it's pulling in the air as it sprays and creating a, a larger droplet size. So. Those are real popular with drift control. They, they work very well. So then you also have different options inside of the air inducted nozzle. So for an example, we have a twin air inducted nozzle here. Um, very good coverage. If we look down through here, you can see it's very good for soil applied and excellent for systemic. So this is a great systemic chemical um, glyphosate, something like that for uh, a nozzle. Same as this one. So then you're just getting into what droplet size do you have? And that's where I jump over to here. Um, this is also a nice thing from T-Jet. They're gonna lay out each nozzle here at the top. And then as you see, the, the droplet sizes, that's what this is. Fine, medium, coarse, very coarse, ultra coarse, extra coarse. That's all based off of your product label. Um, we do not like to make recommendations on that uh, we want you to tell us what droplet size you want. So if, um, if you tell me what you're, what you're spraying, I might be able to get you pretty close, but that's, that's basically what you're doing with the different nozzles is you're changing your droplet size. So this is a pretty good little, um, guide here that t -Jet offers. And the one thing I noticed, what's the different colors back there in the same Okay, that's nozzle? a good question too. So not only do we have an air inducted nozzle, we have three options of what the orifices are. So that's based on um, the product you're spraying. That is a ceramic tip. That would be a dash VK. That is a poly tip. So it's just, it's just a polymer. That would be a VP. And this is a stainless steel orifice. This is probably the most common in the ag industry. This is very common in turf with uh, suspended chemicals or fertilizers, something that's abrasive. So they just make different orifices depending on what chemical you're spraying. Same with the XRs. Same thing. I don't have a ceramic here, but you can even see it in the, the XR. Stainless ceramic poly. So it just depends. Um, ceramic, I think, lasts the longest as far as the life goes, then you're probably talking about stainless and then poly. So, uh, but as today, the polymers in these nozzles are getting better and better. They do last quite a long time. Okay, so um, I hope we didn't confuse you too much on the nozzles. This was pretty basic. Um, like we said, this is T-Jet only. Um, we'll probably do some green leaf here pretty soon in Hypro, we'll compare some other nozzles, but for today, that's about it. I will put all of the links for T-Jet in the description of where you can download this catalog and any other literature I might find helpful for nozzle selection. And if you haven't already, please go and subscribe.